Hi everyone, welcome to Java Tiki. Being a developer, we all know that security is a major cross-cutting concern for any application architecture and it's really a very top job to manage this security mechanism by own, isn't it? So in this tutorial, I will explain how you can leverage key clock to secure your microservice application using API Gateway. Okay? Alright. So if you can remember, I already explained how to implement security in microservice architecture using JWT, right? If you don't remember, no worries. Let's have a quick recap how we designed security in our microservice application, okay? So in typical microservice architecture, we do have these basic components or modules. If you observe here, we have two microservices like Sugi microservice and restaurant microservice and then we have Eureka service registry and then we have API gateway for routing all the incoming requests. Let's assume the user wants to access Sugi app. Then a request will come to the API gateway and then API gateway needs to authenticate that request. So for that, we have created our custom auth service or identity service where we do manage our security related stuff, right? So API gateway will send one JWT token to authentication service or identity service. Then authentication service will extract the user details from that token and then validate against DB to perform the authentication. If it is successful, then route that request. Otherwise, simply terminate it. So same flow will be applicable for restaurant service as well. This is what we understand security implementation in our previous architecture. But did you observe here? In authentication service or identity service, still we are dealing with security related implementation. There is nothing wrong, we can do that. But here, I want someone who can manage security related stuff on behalf of me. All the requests coming to my application, I want to delegate to someone to authenticate on behalf of me. That's why this key clock came into the picture. Not only key clock, like this, there are so many external identity providers available in market like Okta, Azure AD, AWS Cognito and many more. Okay. So if you don't know what is key clock and its basic configuration, then I would strongly suggest you to check out my spring security with key clock video. I will also share the link in video description for your reference. Okay. I was talking about this particular video and also if you are not aware about how to implement security in microservice architecture using JWT, you can refer this third video. Okay. Both the link I will share in the video description for your reference. So let me give some basic heads up about what key clock is. Okay. Basically key clock is an open source identity and access management tool or you can simply say it as a IAM tool who will manage the whole security mechanism of your application. So in this design, rather we manage the security mechanism and resource details in our code, we can delegate all the incoming requests from API gateway to this key clock and we can ask him, hey key clock, can you authenticate this particular request using the JWT token? If authentication succeed, then only route that request, otherwise simply terminate it. Okay, how simple is this, isn't it? Let's go step by step to implement this architecture in our existing microservice application. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. So if you remember, this is what the exact microservice architecture we have designed before to implement the security. We have two microservices, Sugi app and restaurant service. We have service registry and we have API gateway. Now if I will go to the Eureka dashboard and if I will hit here, let's say 8761, right? In Eureka dashboard, I can see all the three microservices is being registered here. Okay. Now to begin with the key clock, the first step you need to do, go to the key clock Either you can download the binary distribution on your machine. If not, just click on get started. Then there are multiple ways you can use. You can download the key clock server or else we will go with the docker. Okay. Rather than install it in our machine, we will use the docker command to start a key clock server for us. So go here and this is what the 
docker command to start a key clock server before that make sure you should start your docker in your machine then once your docker engine will start then you can copy this particular command then you can add this command here i just want to change the port because already my api gateway is running on port 8080 okay so i want to run this particular key clock server in 9090 and i am starting in the dev environment and this is what the version latest version i am using okay so just copy this command open the terminal and simply trigger this it will take few seconds to start meanwhile just remember we have defined the username as a admin and password as a admin this will be our initial login credential okay so you can change whatever you want so it's still loading it will take few seconds if you'll do fast time it will first pull the docker image of key clock server then it will start the server since i already pulled the image so it's just starting the server for me so i believe it started let's verify that go to the browser and then hit the endpoint http local host and the port we have started our key clock server is 9090 just enter it yeah so you can see this is the dashboard now you need to click on this administration console loading the admin ui here you need to give the credential admin and admin that is what our initial login credential so just provide admin now click on sign in this is what the dashboard of key clock server okay now the first step to integrate this key clock to your application first you need to create a realm okay so realm manages set of users credentials roles and groups the user you create in this particular realm belongs to that particular realm itself okay so when they log in to the key clock they log in into the specific realm okay by default you can see the realm name is master so you need to create a new realm for your application okay just click on this and then you just need to give the name here so i am giving spring boot microservice realm okay nothing else you no need to do anything just click on create make sure you just copy this name i mean for your future reference then click on simply create so realm is created you can see here in drop down we can able to see our own realm now the next step we need to configure the client okay so a client in a key clock is a resource server that is the server that host the resource that need to be secured in our case it will be our api gateway which we already created okay but we need to do the client configuration and same configuration we need to provide in our api gateway so that all the request coming to our api gateway will connect to this particular client and realm okay so just click on clients now you have a option to create a new client just click on this and you can give the name let's say i am giving microservice auth this is what my client name i want to give the name same description also same let me have a copy of it then simply click on next and here we need the client authentication right just enable it and the authentication flow we need that is service account role just disable others okay now click on next we don't need authorization at this moment so i just disable it now click on next root url root url of our application is http localhost 8080 okay so if you observe in the api gateway the port we have not defined any port right so it will be running on port 8080 which is the default one so let's configure the same home url also same fine click on save now once you saved it immediately you need to get the secret client secret just click on this credential and here you can find the client secret just copy that for your reference all good so let's review the settings again client id and name we have given always display in ui i don't know about this particular field so let it be disable and this is what the url we have configured 
and we need client authentication of type service account rules basically we are doing the client credential based authentication okay i am not going to add the user and doing the authentication because that already i covered as part of this particular video okay same you can do the copy paste in your api gateway to play with the user related credential or password credential okay fine now anything else no looks good click on save that's it okay all the required information we already configured now if you'll check the endpoint configuration just click on the real m setting open id endpoint configuration because if you observe here in the client go to the client we are using open id connect okay that is what the authentication mechanism we are using you will find the two option open id and saml but we are using the open id connect so if you go to the real m setting and if you will click on this particular configuration you can see all the endpoint so in our case the issue endpoint is nothing our real m endpoint so we need this particular endpoint just copy it next if you'll go and check there is something called token endpoint all the request will come to this particular endpoint to authenticate your token okay so let me copy this particular endpoint again i mean this we need to pass from our postman okay let me copy this fine these are the information we need and if you read it carefully there are so many inputs you can find okay jwk uri and what is the grant type support authorization code implicit re refresh code password in our case we are using this client credential okay let me zoom this for you different type of grant is available here but we are going to use this client credential okay that's it there are so many things okay we are not going to discuss each and every key and value from the json that's fine let me clear this now the next step you need to we are done with the key clock setup okay all the client configuration and real we have created now same we need to integrate to our api gateway so that all the request coming to api gateway will simply redirect to this particular real okay so for that what you can do go to your api gateway first of all i need to remove all the dependency of jwt okay because you already implemented jwt based security in this api gateway so let me remove that first so first let me remove this dependency then let me remove this class we don't need this filter remove it what is there in util jwt util just remove it okay and in the application.yml i will not delegate request to this particular authentication filter which is not exist at this moment remove it now here rather we send it to our authentication mechanism we want to send it to the key clock server right so for that what you can do the simple step you need to configure the issuer uri here so that all the request will goes to that particular realm so for that what you can do let's write it here security of type auth to resource server and we want to implement the security like jwt and what is the issue uri this one that is what we have copied here right so just copy this we want to delegate all the request to this particular realm this configuration is required okay let me refresh this and also make sure you need to add the dependency in your pom.xml which is auth to resource server and security okay if you observe our api gateway we designed using the web flux which is reactive programming okay so let me add those dependency auth to resource server and spring boot starter security just update it and if you observe in each and every microservice what we have defined here we are using latest spring boot version which is 3.1.2 all good fine now to delegate all the request coming to this api gateway to key clock server we need to provide a configuration okay and also i don't want to apply the security while accessing this particular endpoint which is slash eureka so we need to configure this information in our api gateway to bypass slash eureka related endpoint 
and delegate all the request to the key clock server so for that what we can do we need to create a class here okay so just create a package and then i will create a class security config now simply annotate this at the rate configuration and just enable the webflux security that's it now the step is very simple we need to create a security filter chain so i'll create a bean of it security web filter chain then pass the argument server http security now next first i need to disable the csrf okay so server http security dot csrf what i can do i'll just use lambda here okay so we can change it to the method reference fine then just use authorize exchange and tell them if url is coming with slash eureka slash star star just permit all the request okay so what you can do again you need to play with the lambda exchange exchange dot path matchers and you can define the pattern here what is the pattern slash eureka slash star star okay so simple i need to tell here if request is coming with slash eureka slash star star then permit all the request otherwise for any other exchange just authenticate them fine very simple now the next step i need to tell that auth to resource server okay based on the jwt so specify auth to resource server again here also we need to play with the lambda i mean the spring boot version 3.1 having the syntax change in security config you, you need to play with the lambda functional programming okay otherwise it will just give you the error this particular method is deprecated that's fine now here what i can do i will say auth to of type jwt okay and with the default jwt customizer default jwt that's it once everything is done i just want to build it fine the steps are very simple guys what we have done here we have disabled the crf csrf and we tell to the security that if you are release coming with this then permit all the request and for any other request just authenticate them and here the resource server i am using auth2 of type jwt okay and then at the end i just build this particular object and i and i return it back fine now i just need to annotate here at the red bin that's it so we can start the application to verify the behavior before that first let me see okay sugi app and restaurant services up and running let me only restart this gateway okay because we have did the code change in this api gateway so what i'll do i'll just restart it meanwhile let's go to the postman and verify the endpoint so this particular endpoint from the api gateway 8080 will be hit the sugi endpoint and 8080 okay this one right yeah 8080 restaurant will hit the restaurant microservice okay let's see if it is coming up so api gateway is up and running just verify in the dashboard eureka you can see here api gateway is up and running now first let me hit the endpoint of this particular sugi one okay so i will just create a new http of type get give this url if i'll send the request what i am getting here the status code is 401 it means i am not a authenticated user to access this particular endpoint how we can authenticate or who will authenticate for us key clock server how using the jwt okay so we need to first generate a token by giving all the information what we have copied here what is the client name client secret and endpoint we need to get the token 
then we can use the same token to access all the endpoint okay this is very simple step so what you can do go to the authorization choose the authorization type as a oath 2.0 now is there any available token yes there are three token which i already created before just ignore it i will show you how you can create the new token okay so give the token name new app token okay see here there are different grant type which we saw in the open id configuration client credential password credential authorization code implicit authorization code okay with pkc there are different type of uh, grant type okay the one which you will try now client credential now what is the access token url the access token url is the same which we already copy this okay just copy it properly just add it and what is the client id the client id we have defined microservice auth okay same name you need to give here and what is the client secret we already copy the client secret just copy this go here paste it okay and scope you can skip it there, there is no sense to specify anything and client authentication is the basic authentication header send as basic authentication header send client credential in body okay so we'll just choose the default one all good these are the key information you need to provide okay what is the grant type you want to use what is your token url what is the client id and client secret that's it now you need to get the new token so it will take three to four second to generate a token for you this is the token i want to use the same token just use token now if you observe here in the token section current token the token which we created new app token is being assigned here and this is the value and this is the barrier okay now send the request we are getting the result so what happened when you trigger the request it passed the token which you generate now it will take the token and will go to the key clock server and if you observe here in key clock we have open id configuration right go here in this open id configuration there is something called token endpoint based on that it will generate the token and it will validate that token okay and request will launch to this particular realm that is what we have created and it will validate if things are good it will allow you to get the response otherwise it will give the 401 okay now let's try out the restaurant service this is the restaurant endpoint right from the api gateway now if i'll send the request i'm getting 401 because i have not given the token here so how i can give the token the authorization type will be auth20 either you generate a new token or else you can use the existing token which you created new app token okay send the request we got the result fine so point to be note here we are using the client credential but if you want to use the username and password based authentication then you need to choose password credential and you need to give the username and password since we don't create any user so far you can go here there is an option called user you can create the user and you can validate against this particular grant type which is password credential so already explain how you can play with the password credential using by creating the user and role in this particular video okay secure spring boot microservice with key clock using open id same you need to do in your api gateway to achieve this particular grant type okay so i believe this particular security implementation flow is clear for you rather we authenticate the request we are delegating that request to the key clock server okay and key clock server is able to authenticate that particular token and if it is a valid we are able to access our endpoint okay so these are pretty simple statement what we have done in this video do let me know in a comment section if you guys have any doubts that's all about this particular video guys Thanks for watching this video, meet you soon with a new concept.